Hello, Vera, and thank you very much for joining us on The People Show. Here at The People, as always, we bring you stories of real people who live in this world and have shared with us their life, and we'd also ex like to express this unto you so that our viewer also can get inspiration, education, and get to, ign to be ignited through this program. Today we have a very special guest with us in studio. Honoring our invitation to the studio today is none other than the Honorable Ambassador to the Kingdom of the Netherlands, His Excellency, Franz Macken. Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for honoring our invitation. Thank you very much for and inviting me. Welcome to the People Show. Thank you very much. Uh, well, we have a small culture on the People Show where every guest who comes and sits on that ch chair actually shares with us a little bit and just introduces themselves and maybe where they're from and where they grew up? Well, um, I grew up in the north of the Netherlands, which is basically a rather remote uh, area uh, as viewed by the people who live around the capital. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can compare it to Kenya and coming from somewhere in the north. All right. Um, I grew up in the 50s and early 60s without television. Oh. And uh, already then through books, but also through uh, the things we did for mission uh, at school, mm -hmm. uh, I got to know of parts of the world that were so much more deprived mm -hmm. than we were in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. So from early childhood, uh, I've always been very much interested in and drawn to other parts of the world mm -hmm. where it was different. I already realized at an early age that uh, I was privileged to get the chance uh, to go to school, yes. whereas uh, I learned that there was parts of the world where it was not uh, a matter of fact mm -hmm. that you could go to school. For us, it was very difficult to comprehend. Mm -hmm. I must say that uh, my uh, motivation to do well in school mm -hmm. has been always this. I wanted to go out in the world oh, right. and uh, try to do my part for the more deprived parts in the world, oh, right. for other populations. Mm -hmm. That has been uh, instilled in me at a very early age. Mm -hmm. And um, I must say that um, I've, through uh, school and later university, all the choices I've made yes. were always geared towards trying to become somebody who could be useful in Africa, Asia, wherever, All right. um, wherever there might be a need. need Obviously, at that time, the, my vision as a child of the world was a bit of a caricature, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> as if you know there was a rich world and a poor and world a poor where world, yeah. everybody was poor. Yeah. Uh, by now, obviously, uh, I know how different it is. Mm -hmm. Yet, um, I think that from the original of idea of wanting to help, um, we've come to a stage where we want to cooperate, we want to be partners, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which uh, is, in a nutshell, the development uh, that we also as a country has gone, have gone through yes. in our thinking about uh, how to relate to other parts of the world sure. and how you can share um, your wealth, but also your technology, your your experiences. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, uh, I'm grateful for the chances that I had, but um, and I'm grateful for where I am now because yes. as a kid, already I wanted to do something, yes. not knowing where I would end, of course, <laughs> but um, that was the inspiration, that was the motivation. Mm -hmm. Having said that, Mr. Ambassador, maybe a question that my ring in one person's, in, in, in one's head. Uh, you explained about your childhood and the kind of environment that you grew up in. Maybe you can just give us a little feel of what was it like your days in university? If you can just maybe share with us, as, as a young man growing and now more and more drawing closer to the vision that you have of going out there in the world and making a difference. As this vision grew up, what was like your university days? Well, um, it was. I was not a very typical student uh, because at an 
early age, uh, I met a girl uh, who is now my wife. Oh. So <laughs> we already started a family while I, <laughs> while I was studying. Oh. <laughs> and um, so my university days were one of studying and working and, oh. uh, and, and uh, having a family. Yeah. <laughs> so where others were partying, mm. uh, very often I was studying. Oh. Uh, but it was um, for me an, a time where I felt like a sponge uh, taking in all the knowledge uh, that was uh, being taught. It ma the um, onset going to university was very much uh, still that but my father had a company mm -hmm. and obviously he was hoping I would uh, follow in his, to his yes, footsteps, <laughs> which was uh, the reason why I was going into business economics right. and starting to study uh, economy. Mm -hmm. and, but whilst I was doing my studies and doing the, let's say, the general economic uh, courses that there are in any university, I also took the chance to specialize myself in development economics. All right. So during uh, the years, uh, the, uh, any subject that could be useful mm -hmm. in development mm -hmm. uh, was chosen by me. All right. And after my bachelor's, uh, when I specialized, I specialized in uh, international economics of development. Mm -hmm. Also because there were some rather famous professors uh, who were relating from their own experience right. uh, what it was mm -hmm. um, to be working in uh, developing countries. Mm -hmm. So my university days, uh, I at morning and night I earned my money yeah. by cleaning out um, pubs. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> and, must have been uh, interesting. And, um, and at the same time, um, so I could uh, f finance uh, my study. And, uh, and there was a lot of studying. But there was also a lot of, uh, as youngsters do, lots and lots of discussions uh, with peers, yes. with friends about the world, about how we were going to change the world. Uh, not different from any other youngster, I think, who's studying. And at one point, think he knows it all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you only to discover later on that <laughs> the reality is completely different. <laughs> but you still have to start uh, once you finish your studies, indeed. Mm -hmm. well, quite interesting. Now, maybe just if you can just paint a picture of uh, what kind of an environment that the Netherlands uh, offers for particularly young people. As you know, most of our viewers are young people. And this time, as the world is becoming a global village, people are more yearning to get information about uh, other countries, just like yourself as you're growing up, you wanted to know about the world. There, are, there is this young boy or young man who is aspiring to do the same things that you do. But then what kind of an environment does the Netherlands as a country provide for such young people who are looking to venture into this kind of a world? Well, for your viewers, it may be um, a little bit difficult to understand, but what happened um, after the Second World War, um, there was, uh, I'm, I'm a post-war child. Oh. Uh, they call them baby boomers, baby you know. <laughs> after, after the Second World War, uh, there was, uh, the m Europe was building up, uh, where uh, after the, these years, uh, there was the idea that uh, you had to work hard uh, because we had to reconstruct, uh, we had to get back on uh, our economic feet. And so the parents uh, were the ones who were, um, in my case, not strict, not at all, mm -hmm. but they were very much, you have to work very hard sure. and uh, you have to be very grateful for what you have. Whereas uh, when I grew up, we thought that, that is the establishment. Oh. Those, those are the old folks. Old folks. <laughs> those are the ones who went through the war. Yeah. It was not my war. Yeah, sure. And it was the time uh, where the youngsters in the Netherlands uh, became rather individual persons. Mm -hmm. 
uh, it was also the time of the hippie movement. Oh, right. You know, mm-hmm. the hippies had as their philosophy there should be peace, mm-hmm. peace and flower power, mm-hmm. soft. soft. After this hard period, it was basically we were revolting against the elder generation, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, came out of a war and were very serious about working hard and. Whereas we thought we don't want to do want to do uh, want to do anything with violence, mm-hmm. we want to push away this old time, mm-hmm. and we are in a new era. Mm-hmm. So we are the ones who are free. We have a free mind. Mm-hmm. It was also the period where drugs came into um, uh, our lives. Mm-hmm. <coughs> uh, frankly, uh, I don't want to sound very holy, but I never had anything with drugs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be in control, oh. but my environment was one of a lot of that's drugs true, yeah. and a lot of uh, people being very passive. Mm-hmm. Now that's where I differed from my peers, because I think from my parents I still got this uh, this attitude that I should work hard, sure. so I could that's not true. just let go and use drugs and 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 let the years go by. Yes. So my hippie period was one that I enjoyed very much, mm-hmm. but at the same time having a family already mm-hmm. and uh, have, uh, having that attitude of uh, feeling of responsibility mm-hmm. and having to do something mm-hmm. uh, got me through that period wow. in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> so in that sense, um, the environment in the Netherlands was one you may remember there were student protests, yes. uh, there were lots of protests against government, yes. there was protest against uh, establishment. Mm-hmm. It was also the Vietnam War, yes. so we protested against the Vietnam, Vietnam War. War yeah. um, there was a lot of racial discrimination in the world, we protested against that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, again, we felt very good, uh, you know, <laughs> Having the um, freedom to being on the high moral ground. <laughs> Uh, where so much went wrong in the world. So the Netherlands uh, was, with hindsight, also a country where um, there was a new thinking about what's right and wrong. We were very much in favor of uh, people in resistance movements who stood up against dictatorships. Um, There was, in that sense, as in the student period, um, 60s, 70s, it's very much about uh, that, trying to be righteous, Mm -hmm. trying to be just Mm -hmm. being against violence, against any war that was raging, against uh, discrimination Mm -hmm. of people. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, and that was the free spirit that uh, I think shaped me in those years, Mm -hmm. feeling, uh, responsible for yourself mm-hmm. and uh, that you're also responsible for your own actions sure. so being free also has its limits mm-hmm. in the sense that you're responsible you for your own behavior mm-hmm. and uh, your own destiny mm-hmm. quite pretty much that I mean that background that you just shared on gives a little bit more light on why the Netherlands is a country that is seen to be more uh, engaged in issues of human rights uh, and development, uh, even beyond their borders as they engage with other countries as well. And maybe if you can just tell us, uh, when did you come to Kenya and what was your first feeling when you came to Kenya? Were you like, yeah, or <laughs> of course it's an opportunity and it's work you have to do, but maybe you can just tell us a little bit about that. Well. Um, uh, during my career, I have uh, traveled uh, professionally a lot in in uh, Africa, uh, throughout Africa. So I had been to Kenya before. All right. I think uh, my first footsteps were in 1983 oh. uh, in I Kenya. Was so, very young. <laughs> <laughs> so your viewers weren't even born by yeah, then. Yeah, sure, definitely. Um, I've seen uh, Kenya change uh, over the years. So when I came here in my current capacity uh, as as a Netherlands ambassador, Mm. I must say I really saw a country that was also uh, coming a long way, had come a long way Mm -hmm. uh, in the 
80s even, you know, when you arrived, it was very dark, you sure. smelled the wood fire, sure, sure. Uh, you had to find your way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you come to a modern city with highways, uh, with uh, electricity, where uh, lots of things are happening, sure. a vibrant society. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, obviously also a country where there is uh, both a lot of progress uh, and, a, and a lot to do yeah. still. Sure, uh, sure. So in that sense, uh, um, there is, it, it's not a country that's finished because no country ever mm -hmm. is finished. It's finished yeah. uh, but we, um, I felt lots and lots of opportunity mm -hmm. that as a Dutch ambassador, yeah, uh, I could relate to Kenya and the Kenyans in the sense that uh, there would be a lot to do together to partner on. Mm -hmm so that uh, we could still do the things that I set out to do when I was in primary school. Sure, <laughs> yeah, the big <laughs> dream that you had. The big dream, yeah. to, but in a very, very different shape yeah. and mm -hmm. manner than uh, I had imagined yeah, at that time, yeah. that uh, we can work together uh, towards a better future for the Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's very interesting. And on that, I, I hope you, you can hold that up because I want us to take a short break. But then when we come back, I would like us to just touch on, on that line that we began about uh, the relations between the two nations. I would like us to talk more about what the Netherlands uh, and the Kenyan government are, are doing together right now, the bilateral uh, relationship. And uh, then we look at other projects. I understand you have a big uh, project that is coming up. Uh, you're participating in renewable energy as well. And uh, you've also got many other projects that you're working with the societies in terms of health, uh, education, food security, and stuff like that. Well, if you are, if you are just joining us, we are going to take a short break right now. If you have a comment, suggestion, or opinion, you can send that to our SMS line. That's 21144. is the number. You can drop us an email on info at gbskenya.com. Info at gbskenya.com is the email. We take a short break now. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> 